to get those on the website in my online store the second it's ready and legal and all that sort of stuff because this is exactly the sort of technology that I don't have either of those devices but I have stuff in my home biohacking laboratory that is not public and just not accessible to a lot of the world that should be and these are examples of that type of thing so we'll get it up as soon as we can and right now these things are probably going to be relatively expensive but over time as they become more popular we will learn to make them more cost effective and they'll become something that is in schools and particularly in prisons for God's sake <laughs> and while the places you can really help people that might be one it is my pleasure to introduce Steve Folks. If you don't know who Steve Folks is, you should. He's the man who wrote the book Smart Drugs and New Dreams two years ago. He's someone who has absolutely changed my life. I would not be here today if it wasn't for Steve. When I first started getting serious cognitive dysfunction in my mid-twenties, I went online, this was 15 years ago, and I searched around to learn about smart drugs. I downloaded and read everything that Steve ever wrote, including his famous 80s smart drug newsletter. Is that what it was called? Yeah, Smart Drug News. Smart Drug News. I still have every back episode uh, on my bookshelf. They got damaged in a flood. I dried them out individually with an iron. And they're still relevant 15 years later. So if there's something I don't know how to do and I'm stuck, the first guy I call is Steve. So he is like an old school master biohacker and a super expert on way more than smart drugs, including all sorts of metabolic things I know nothing about. So it's my great pleasure to introduce Steve. Um, I have 30 minutes to do a two-hour talk, so I'm going to go through this really fast, and I'm going to allow you, I'm going to try to in, end up with some time at the end for questions, so as the items scroll on the screen, uh, make notes about something that you might want me to elaborate on, okay? Um, my message today is about the uniqueness of the brain regarding energy, okay? Um, the brain is um, uh, one of the few organs in the body that doesn't really have an off switch. Your heart rate, your heart can go up to very high energy outputs and go back down again. Your muscles can go up and down. Your liver can go up a little bit and down. But the brain is pretty much on all the time. If your brain loses about 20 or 30 percent of its metabolic activity, you're unconscious. If it loses maybe 40 percent, you're in a coma. And so. This is uh, very important for understanding how to keep your brain functioning and to um, uh, mitigate effects like Alzheimer's disease, which um, I'm going to argue is a brownout of the brain regarding energy. Um, I'll start with the basics that the brain uses the same kind of biochemistry that the rest of your body does. So that's not different. All of these factors here are um, common between the brain and the body. And at this point here, the brain burns hot. 3% of your body mass burns 20% of your body's energy. Shows you this emphasis on, um, on, on energy for the brain to, to work properly. Um, in terms of B vitamins as coenzymes, um, uh, you know, that's probably the, uh, one of the best smart drugs that exists on the planet today. You get more bang from your buck for that. Everybody's going to talk about the racetams and, and selegiline and things like that, but you know, B vitamins give you more bang for your buck. And even in terms of performance enhancement, there, there are studies, for example, that showed that uh, marksmen given 30 times the RDA of B complex vitamins improved their um, shooting scores, not only in the short term, but over the long term. And both during practice sessions and during um, competitions. And so, um, I'm not going to go through all of these, let me go on to the next, uh, the next message. Um, and that is that um, your brain talks to you, if you bother to listen to it. And your brain is so sensitive to a lot of changes that would affect your body, and the only example of one that um, I would say is, is the other way around has to do with insulin resistance. Your brain is relatively unaffected by insulin resistance, but your, your body, your liver, your muscles, your circulatory system are very significantly influenced by insulin resistance. But on the whole, if you develop a biofeedback loop from your brain, it'll tell you what's going 
continue on with your body faster than pretty much any other kind of biofeedback signal that you can wire to your cell. Um, so let, let's go on to, um, you know, this is the message. So, you know, surprisingly, most people think that when they're daydreaming, their brain isn't burning as much energy, or if they are suffering from brain fog, that somehow their brain isn't burning as much energy. You might be talking a few percent, but it's certainly not very much. So the brain goes unconscious or goes into a coma when it loses energy. So it, it, this is a unique feature of the brain. And so this is a basis for therapy for Alzheimer's disease. I'll get into that in a second. I've um, successfully reversed four out of five cases of Alzheimer's disease in working with people. Um, but let me go down into the basics of the uh, energy systems. Anaerobic energy to ATP, aerobic energy 38 ATP, up to 38 ATP. There is some leakage in the system for this, so you don't always get 38, but you might get 30 or 32. Um, but there's interesting effects. Both of these are acid generating. But here we get lactic acid, and there we get carbon dioxide, and it turns out makes a huge difference in how we function. Um, by the way, when I was um, in my 20s and 30s and 40s, I had flop sweat stage fright. So it turns out that carbon dioxide here is a very, very critical factor. So if anybody has an interest in that, talk to me afterwards. Um, glycolysis is the primary anaerobic system using glucose for energy. Oxidative phosphorylation can burn glucose or fat. So the anaerobic system gives you life, and the aerobic system gives you multicellular life and ultimately consciousness. And so this is, this is what enables us to function and do spend this 20% of our body's energy in making sure that our minds work the way they're supposed to. Here's an example of things that are connected to um, uh, brain dysfunction. So here are panic attacks from carbon dioxide deficiencies. That, that relates to stage fright. Uh, big complex deficiencies, that was measured in English school children and California school children where they found that one third of kids experienced a 10 point IQ increase in one academic year just taking the RDA level of vitamins, uh, B complex vitamins. Uh, brain fog from blood pH disturbances, um, EEG abnormalities in juvenile inmates. There's a lot of good stuff here. Make notes if you want me to talk about any of this during the Q&A session. Okay, so here's some things that you might not be familiar with relating to um, your, how your mind can uh, operate. Obsessive thoughts and compulsive behaviors are related to how your brain is working. And inflammation which is an important regulator of, uh, uh, of the, the way your brain is balanced in terms of the serotonin nervous system to your dopamine nervous system. Sleep difficulties, depression, sensitivity to pain, all of these things are influenced by the same kinds of mechanisms. This is the uh, glutathione system, which is an antioxidant system that we're normally completely unaware of. Uh, one of the most common manifestations of this would be a hangover the morning after you uh, do too much alcohol. That selectively damages the glutathione system. And um, the failure of this glutathione regulating system results in either Alzheimer's disease or sudden infant death syndrome. Circulat circulatory disorders, COPD, obviously you need to have lungs to get oxygen into your brain, you need to have circulation to get oxygen into your brain, carry away the CO2 and the waste products, and deliver other kinds of nutrients, and so these are obviously connected to mental manifestations. And here's a big one, hypothyroidism and hypometabolism. Uh, being cold, having your, your metabolic rate being below normal. And you can raise your metabolic rate by taking fish oil, or you can raise your metabolic rate by doing exercise, you can raise your metabolic rate by taking thyroid hormone. And uh, so anytime somebody will look at these kinds of influences and positive effects on brain function, you want to ask yourself the question, is it better if I use one of the other ways of doing it? Especially with fish oils. Okay, don't pass out. <laughs> Okay, 
this is a diagram from my uh, YouTube video series on Alzheimer's reversal. And this part here is the, um, the normal, um, healthy, metabolic phase of our energy systems. And we have glucose and ketones as fuels combining with oxygen that flow through the blood system to deliver cellular energy. And ATP is the most common form of that, but GTP, uh, ATP converts into GTP, which drives the transportation system of the brain. So when the brain cells um, change their morphology from going from round globular um, entities to long drawn out um, uh, structures, dendrites and axons, where the distance of that of, of a microtubule in an axon is like a two-lane highway from San Diego to Maine in terms of dimension, if that system, that transportation system fails, your brain is going to shut down. It cannot move material by diffusion. Your liver can move material by diffusion, your brain cannot. And so cellular energy production drives your enzymes, drives your ion pumping in your brain, neurotransmitter synthesis, that's all certainly brain activity, um, but it also drives your antioxidant defense system. And that turns out to be the key for Alzheimer's disease. Right here, we have a balance between glutathione and mercury, and we're, as long as glutathione is dominant, the effects of mercury are mitigated. So as long as mercury is bound directly to glutathione, it's, it's almost non-toxic. But when that balance shifts, all of these cascades happen where the mercury poisons the energy systems and poisons brain kinases and phosphatases that are involved in the brain. And that's one of the reasons that your brain uses 20% of your energy and why your brain doesn't turn off when you sleep or when you daydream or when you take a nap. Um, every, every 90 seconds, your brain goes from a hyperphosphorylated state to a hypophosphorylated state. And every time your body does that, there's this massive amount of energy that's involved in putting phosphate groups. They come from the ATP and the GTP and CTP. They get put onto enzymes. And when the phosphate gets put onto the enzyme, the enzyme either increases its activity or it drops ex its activity. And so um, some of these kinases, when they're phosphorylated, they become more active. And then later, when they're further phosphorylated, they become less active, and so they reverse the cycle. So every 90 seconds, your brain is running from high tension to low tension, from high structural rigidity to low structural rigidity. And, and this is one of the basic cycles that's an energy overhead in the way your brain works. This is producing stability in the way your brain works. Long-term stability is maintained by an oscillating system. So um, this, is, uh, this is probably enough of this for, for right now. If anybody wants to ask me about this, uh, please do so. And if you want to meet me during the lunch hour, please do so. So here's a whole bunch of things from you know plain but you know, non-sexy things like the complex vitamins to smart drugs, you know, metabolic typing issues, detoxification mechanisms involving heavy metals, um, anti-aromatase therapy is something that's done by a lot of anti-aging doctors, sex hormone replacement therapy. These are all ways that one can improve one's brain function and may deal with a critical bottleneck in the way your brain works. So here's some, some basic ways of testing your brain, and I'll start with the worst way, subjective attention. You're paying attention to how your brain works, but it's not a very good mechanism because your brain is the tool that you're observing. You're, you're observing your brain with your brain, and so you don't notice a lot of stuff. It takes a pretty large change in your brain function for it to become subjectively obvious, and also, Quick changes are noticed, but slow changes are not. So if you're allergic to wheat, and you eat a, a sandwich with wheat on the, on the bread, uh, with wheat in the bread, your, your reaction to that in the short term is what you'll notice, but your reaction to it in the long term will not be noticed. Objecting testing programs, software, 
You can go online at quantifiedmind.com. It's a bunch of free tests.